Good even, gang. How y'all doing tonight? Today is Wednesday, January the 15th, 2020. We're here to do some Bible study. So why don't you go ahead and grab your Bibles, get something to drink, and we'll get started this evening, okay? All right, how's everybody's week going? Y'all doing okay? We're in hump day. Everything's just sliding downhill from here. And uh, literally, it seems like, according to what we're hearing, um, Virginia's declared a state of emergency. They're going to try to make it illegal for anyone to carry any weapons, even though it's in their constitution. And because of this tyranny, the patriots are going to be striking back and they're going to disobey these orders and they're all going to carry weapons, which they should. Because if they don't, then they're just kowtowing to the tyranny. They need to stand up against it in, in mass, in mass. They need to stand up against it. And last projection I heard, there was going to be over 100,000 people there. So we'll see what happens. It's going to be interesting. Um, there's a lot of things that are going on in the Midwest. Um, there's secret meetings of some sort going on. Uh, Department of Homeland Security went and grabbed uh, the state legislatures in Kansas and in Nebraska and took them to a secured location for some kind of a secret meeting. Still got drones flying over Colorado. Nobody knows where they came from or what they're doing. But there's speculation now that there might be a couple of hot nukes that uh, made it across the border somehow, and they could possibly be located in that general vicinity, Nebraska, Kansas, Denver. Denver is the home of the New World Order. If anything happens to Washington, D.C., they will move the government to DIA. So it's going to be kind of interesting. Continuity of government is what they call it. So it's going to be kind of interesting to see what happens here in the next couple of days. This rally in Virginia is supposed to happen on the 20th. Okay, so we've got five days until this happens. Keep your eyes open, gang. Be just head on a swivel because things are going to get crazy. And nobody's stopping it. You sure don't hear our president say one thing about it. Nothing. Not one thing. And also the next 48 hours could tell a lot because if the sellouts in the Senate allowed all those idiots over in the House of Representatives, all the commies, to have some blackmail over them, then... then According to the, to, to the things that uh, Pelosi has stated, Trump could be in jail in the next 48 hours. What do you think is going to happen in this country when all this craziness breaks out and a duly elected president who really hasn't, in my opinion, done anything is charged as a criminal? That makes us all criminals, gang, because at that point, they can criminalize you for any reason, and that's what it's setting up precedence for. Nobody really sees it. When a president does things, it affects all of us because he sets the tone for the country, and this is going to be bad. This is going to be really bad, gang, so just be ready, okay? Pray over it. Pray over it. This is all part of the judgment. This is what we've been talking about with the judgment. Pray over it. We just saw the last study, what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah. Well, we are we're worse than Sodom and Gomorrah, in my opinion. I think we're worse. So the judgment coming down on this country is going to be swift and it's going to be intense. And nobody gets a get-out-of-jail-free card. 
So just forget about rapture. Just endure to the end. Be ready. Be ready to defend your family. All right, gang, that's enough of my jaw jacking about what's going on in this country and the worldly things. Let's get into our study. Tonight, we will be delving further into the book of Genesis, and we will be starting on chapter 20, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and we'll get ourselves together. Pray, gang. That's all we've got. Pray. Pray a hedge of protection over your family. Get your family to pray with you. This is imperative. This is absolutely imperative. I'm going to pull the Bible out of the way here just for a second so I can take a sip of my coffee. Also, before all this goes down, make a point of going through your packs. I know if you guys are like me, you have several packs. You got your bug out bag, you have your get home bag, which is like a 20 mile get home bag, and then you have a 20 to 50 mile get home bag. Not to mention whatever tactical gear that you run. Go through it. Go through your packs. Make sure that they are stocked with fresh food, plenty of it. Make sure that you've got batteries for your flashlights, knife sharpeners for your knives, things to make fires with, you know, so you can do the things, because we're going to be doing things pretty soon. Go through your tactical gear. Make sure that your mags are tapped. Tap the back of them, bang, against your hand like that. Bullets pointing this way. Tap them against your hand so that they set in the back of the magazine. That'll prevent jams. And sometimes when you're running around with them on your on your chest rig or whatever, your plate gear or whatever it is that you're that you uh, that you use, whatever kind of gear that you use, if you're not using those magazines an awful lot, they'll get the bullets will move around in there. They'll shake around. So just tap them one time on the, on your hand, and it'll set them bullets back into place. Just a little helpful hint, okay? Make sure you go through your gear. Water purification. Big important. All right, gang. Chapter 20, Genesis. If you're not ready, it's all right. Relax. There's no rush. You're good. Just shut the video off and catch up with us when you got a second, okay? All right. It's all good, man. All right. Chapter 20. And Abraham, Abraham, boy, that started out good, didn't it? Let's try that again. Take two, click. And Abraham journeyed from thence toward the south country and dwelled between Kadesh and Shur and sojourned in Gerar. And Abraham said of Sarah his wife, She is my sister. And Abimelech, king of Gerar, sent and took Sarah. But God came to Ab Abimelech in a dream by night, and said to him, Behold, thou art but a dead man, for the woman which thou hast taken for she is a man's wife. But Abimelech had not come near her, and he said, Lord, wilt thou slay also a righteous nation? Said he not unto me, She is my sister. And she, even she herself said, He is my brother. In the integrity of my heart and innocence of my hands have I done this? And God said unto him in a dream, Yea, I know that thou didst this in the integrity of thy heart, for I also withheld thee from sinning against me. Therefore suffered I thee not to touch her. Now therefore restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet, and he shall pray for thee, 
and thou shalt live. And if thou restore her not, know thou that thou shalt surely die, thou and all that are thine. Therefore Amalek rose early in the morning, and called all his servants, and told all these things in their ears, and the men were sore afraid. Then Amalek called Abraham, and said unto him, What hast thou done unto us? And what has I have I offended thee, that thou hast brought on me and on my kingdom a great sin? Thou hast done deeds unto me that ought not be to be done. And Amalek said unto Abraham, What sawest thou that thou hast done these things? And Abraham said, Because I thought, Surely the fear of God is not in this place, and they will slay me for my wife's sake. And yet, indeed, she is my sister, she is the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother, and she became my wife. And it came to pass, when God caused me to wander from my father's house, that I said unto her, This is thy kindness, which thou shalt shew unto me, at every place whither we shall come. Say of me, He is my brother. And Amalek took sheep, and oxen, and men servants, and women servants, and gave them unto Abraham, and restored him Sarah his wife. And Amalek said, Behold, my land is before thee, dwell where it pleaseth thee. And unto Sarah he said, Behold, I have given thy brother a thousand pieces of silver. Behold, he is to thee a covering of the eyes unto all that are with thee and with all others. Thus she was reproved. So Abraham prayed unto God, and God healed Amalek and his wife and his maidservants, and they bare children. For the Lord had fast closed up all the wombs of the house of Amalek because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. Chapter 21 and the Lord visited Sarah, as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah, as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived, and bare Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time of which God had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare to him, Isaac. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac, being eight days old, as God had commanded him. And Abraham was an hundred years old when his son Isaac born unto him. And Sarah said, God hath made me to laugh, so that all that here will laugh with me. And she said, Who would have said unto Abraham that Sarah should have given children suck, for I have borne him a son in his old age. And the child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar the Egyptian, which she had borne unto Abraham, mocking. Wherefore she said unto Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight, Abraham's sight, because of his son. And God said unto Abraham, Let it not be grievous in thy sight, because of the lad, and because of thy bondwoman. In all that Sarah hath said unto thee, Hearken unto her voice, for in Isaac shall thy seed be called. And also of the son of the bondwoman, I will make a nation, because he is thy seed. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, and took bread, and a bottle of water, and gave it unto Hagar, 
put it on her shoulder and the child, and sent her away. And she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. And the water was spent in the bottle, and she cast the child under one of the shrubs. And she went and sat her down over against him a good way off, as it were a bow shot. For she said, Let me not see the death of the child. And she sat over against him, and lifted up her voice, and wept. And God heard the voice of the lad, and the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven, and said unto her, What aileth thee, Hagar? Fear not, for God had her, hath heard the voice of the lad, where, is he, where he is. Arise, lift up the lad, and hold him in thine hand, for I will make him a great nation. And God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water, and she went and filled the bottle with water, and gave the lad drink. And God was with the lad, and he grew, and dwelt in the wilderness, and became an archer. And he dwelt in the wilderness of Paran. And his mother took him a wife out of the land of Egypt. And it came to pass at that time that Amalek and Phicol, the chief captain of his host, spake unto Abraham, saying, God is with thee in all that thou doest. Now therefore swear unto me here by God that thou wilt not deal falsely with me, nor with my son, nor with my son's son, but according to the kindness that I have done unto thee, thou shalt do unto me, and to the land wherein thou hast sojourned. And Abraham said, I will swear. And Abraham reproved Amalek because of a well of water, which Abimelech servants had violently taken away. And Amalek said, I wot not who hath done this thing. Neither didst thou tell me, neither yet heard I of it, but today. And Abraham took sheep and oxen and gave them unto Amalek, and both of them made a covenant. And Abraham set seven ewe lambs of the flock by themselves. And Ambalek said unto Abraham, What means these seven ewe lambs, which thou hast set by themselves? And he said, For these seven ewe lambs shalt thou take of my hand, that they may be a witness unto me that I have digged this well. Wherefore he called that place Beersheba, because they swear both of them. Thus they made a covenant at Beersheba. Then Ambalek rose up, and Phicol, the chief captain of his host, and they returned into the land of the Philistines. More giants. Verse 33, And Abraham planted a grove in Beersheba, and called there on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. And Abraham sojourned in the Philistines' land many days. Chapter 22 And it came to pass after these things, that God did tempt Abraham, and said unto him, Abraham. And he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thy only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. Verse 3. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, and saddled his ass, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up, and went unto the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes, and saw the place afar off. 
And Abraham said unto his young man, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship, and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering, and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand, and a knife, and they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father, and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for burnt offering. So they went, both of them, together. And they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there, and laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand, and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven, and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in the thicket by his thorns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah-Jerah. Jehovah-Jerah. As it is to this day in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time, and said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son. That in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. So Abraham returned unto his young men. And they rose up, and went together to Beersheba, and Abraham dwelt at Beersheba. And it came to pass after these things, that it was told Abraham, saying, Behold, Milcah, she hath also borne children unto thy brother Nahor, Huz his firstborn, and Buzz his brother, and Kemel, the father of Aram, and Chesed, and Hazo, and Fildash, and Jidlap, and Bethuel, and Bethuel begot Rebekah. These eight Milcah did bear to Nohar, Abraham's brother, and his concubine, whose name was Ramu, Ramah, Ramah. She bare also Teba, and Gram, and Thahash, and Ma'aka. Got through that, didn't we? Chapter 23. And Sarah was a hundred and seven and twenty years old. These were the years of life of Sarah. And Sarah died in Kirjatharabah. The same is Hebron in the land of Canaan. And Abraham came to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her. And Abraham stood up from before his dead 
and spake unto the sons of Heth, saying, I am a stranger and a sojourner with you. Give me a possession of a burying place with you, that I may bury my dead out of my sight. And the children of Heth answered Abraham, saying unto him, Hear us, my lord, thou art a mighty prince among us. In the choice of our sepulchres bury thy dead. None of us shall withhold from thee his sepulchre, but that thou mayest bury thy dead. And Abraham stood up and bowed himself to the people of the land, even to the children of Heth. And he communed with them, saying, If it be your mind that I should bury my dead out of my sight, hear me, and entreat for me to Ephron, the son of Zohar, that he may give me the cave of Machpel, Machpelah, which he hath which is in the end of his field. For as much money as it is worth, he shall give me give it me for a possession of a burying place amongst you. And Ephron dwelt among the children of Heth, and Ephron the Hittite answered Abraham in the audience of the children of Heth, even of all that went in at the gate of his city, saying, Nay, my lord, hear me, the field I give, the field give I thee, and the cave that is therein, I give it thee, in the presence of the sons of my people, give I it thee, bury thy dead. And Abraham bowed down himself before the people of the land, and he spake unto Ephron in the audience of the people of the land, saying, But if thou wilt give it, I pray thee, hear me. I will give thy the money for the field. Take it of me, and I will bury my dead there. And Ephron answered Abraham, saying unto him, My lord, hearken unto me, that the land is worth four hundred shekels of silver. What is that betwixt me and thee? Bury therefore thy dead. And Abraham hearkened unto Ephron, and Abraham weighed the... Uh, to Ephron the silver which he had he had named in the audience of the sons of Heth, four hundred shekels of silver current money with the merchant. And the field of Ephron which was in Machpelah, which was before Mamre, the field and the cave which was therein, and all the trees that were in the field that were in all the borders round about, were made sure unto Abraham for a possession in the presence of the children of Heth before all that went in at the gate of his city. And after this, Abraham buried Sarah, his wife, in the cave of the field of Machpe Machpelah before Mamre. The same is Hebron in the land of Canaan, and the field and the cave that is therein were made sure unto Abraham for a possession of a burying place by the sons of Heth. And I think we're going to stop there on chapter 24, and we'll pick up on that Sunday, okay? All right, gang. That was a good reading. We learned a lot. Ow. Dang, I pulled my brain out over here. Sorry, I'm bumping the mic now. We learned a lot on that one. We learned all about how uh, God uh, realized that Abraham was going to be a good servant because he did what God said without question. He just did it. Even though it was his beloved son, he did what God said. And in doing that, God saved Isaac and blessed Abraham greatly. Isaac developed the nation children of Israel. And it's interesting how Abraham bought the land. He didn't just accept a gift. He bought it. Because that's the right thing to do. I'm sure God was directing all of that, you know. Alright, gang. Well, I think that's uh, 
pretty close to a wrap here for tonight. Please, please, gang, please pray. Pray about everything. Get your family to repent. This is really important. Things are coming to a head. Things are coming to a head fast. What happens if somebody in your family ends up in a crossfire or something during this civil war and gets themselves killed and they're not saved? It's a very sad situation. But we need to get our families all on board and into the Word and praying together. That's where your church is. I know a lot of you have the same problem I do, finding a church. Been to so many churches, and they're just no fit. They don't teach God's Word. They have false doctrine. They have crazy things. Just doesn't even make sense. But your church lies with your family and your neighbors. Remember what Jesus says. Two or more followers of Christ in fellowship is a church. You don't need no fancy building. You don't need no preacher that thinks that he's God. That's for sure. Talk about deception. Nor do you need a pope that says that he's God incarnate. He's the false prophet. What he is. Anyway, gang, we're getting over 30 minutes here. It just hit 32 minutes. So I think I probably ought to better end this. Gang, let's pray for... Pray for the patriots. Pray for the patriots. And pray that some of these patriot groups have some knowledge of tactics and strategies so that they're not caught with their pants down. So that they can create a perimeter, a safe zone for patriots to fall back on. That's the only advice that I have for all the militia members. Make sure that you're able to set up a fallback, a perimeter, a safe zone for the patriots that are running out of the area where they're going to have gunfire, probably, around that capital. Set up safe zones around that perimeter and be ready. Be in communication, have your freaks all set up, and be in touch with each other. This is a very serious thing. Be ready. Well, gang, I think that's about all I've got for tonight. Just be in prayer. Be ready. Be very ready. That's all I got, gang. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for participating in the study. And God thanks you for praying. All right, gang, that's all I've got. We'll see you on Sunday. Y'all take care of yourselves and take care of your families. All right? God bless each and every one of you. And we'll see you again on Sunday. Lord willing, anyway. <laughs> all right, we'll talk to y'all later, gang. Have a good night. Have a good rest of your week. Bye.